Good morning, everyone. I hope that you all had a good night's sleep last night, but I can pretty confidently say that you probably didn't have as good of a sleep as you could have had. I can say this because it's based on the assumption that you all used either your phone or your laptop right before you went to bed last night. And thanks to a survey entitled Ben Garvey's Survey, I found that 97% of people surveyed used their cell phone right before they went to bed, and 88% of these people used their laptop right before they went to bed. Now, the sample size was a little bit small because I just did a bunch of my peers, about 35 or so, but when the data is that resounding, it means that there's something meaningful that we can learn from that. But now you're wondering, so yeah, I use my phone before I go to sleep. What does that have to do with my sleep quality? Well, there are two harmful things that come with this. One is the blue light that your phone emits and all electronic devices emit, which is harmful to your sleep. And the second is FOMO, or fear of missing out. So first I'm gonna talk about why the blue light is hurting your sleep. Numerous studies, including one from the National Sleep Foundation, have shown that blue light is bad for your sleep. It reduces your melatonin production, which is the natural hormone that your body creates as you're trying to go to sleep, and it's what makes you fall asleep. It also increases your sleep latency as a result of this, which basically just means it takes you longer to fall asleep. And finally, in an interview with NPR, Anya Kamen says that it reduces the time spent in REM sleep, which is, it basically makes you feel a lot more drowsy when you wake up. <coughs> so the second problem with using your phone right before you go to bed is FOMO, or Fear of Missing Out. Now many of you have probably heard this acronym, it's gotten pretty well at widespread use in the last few years, and according to the Oxford Dictionary, it is defined as anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere that you're not allowed to go to, and you've probably seen on social media. So according to Statista, they ran this poll here, and it shows that 72% of people on their phones are on Snapchat before bed, 68% are on Facebook, 66 are on Instagram, and 36 are on Twitter. So this is really proving that the main reason that people are on their phones and their laptops before they go to bed is to check social media and see what else is going on in people's lives. And I get it, we don't want to feel like we're missing out. We have to remain in touch with all these people. But it's really not good for you. According to Boston Magazine, FOMO can actually lead to anxiety, depression, and insecurity. And I personally have definitely felt these effects. There are nights where, you know, I've just been sitting in my room, watching some Netflix, eating some food, having a great time. All of a sudden I check Snapchat, I see there's a party going on. Now I'm not having a great time. I'm thinking about, man, I wish I was at the party. I'm sure you guys can all relate to this. But, so these are the problems. Um, but I'm not some crotchety old man who's going to tell you that, you know, social media is horrible. We need to get rid of all of our electronic devices right now. You know, I'm just like you guys. I realize that social media is pretty cool, and it's definitely here to stay, no matter how people feel about FOMO. So, instead of getting rid of social media completely, I have a few ways that we can reduce these problems. So the first is that Daily Science recommends to just read a book. Guys, it's not high school anymore. You're not a nerd if you read books. Books are cool. So I recommend diving into a good book, and 30 minutes before you go to sleep, put down the phone, you know, maybe scroll through Twitter, scroll, scroll through Instagram before you start reading, and then for 30 minutes just relax with the book. This will completely eliminate all the problems that blue light brings around. My second suggestion is to download the app Moment. Now Moment is an app that tracks how much time you spend on your phone and what apps you spend this time on. I personally downloaded this app the other week and now when I'm on my phone too much, I feel bad and I want to put it down because it kind of scolds you. It's like, get off your phone. <laughs> um, so I recommend downloading all of that, it's a free app. And then the third thing, this one's a bit harder, but definitely the most important, is we all just need to realize that everyone is not having more fun than us. 
100% of the time. When we look at social media, we're looking at a filtered version of people's lives. You don't see any of the stress that school brings. You don't see any of the bad things. You're looking at the parts of their life that they want you to see, the parts that bring you to be jealous of them. You have to realize that it's not a true interpretation of their lives. So if this problem isn't addressed, the world's not going to end. It's not going to be some horrible, horrible catastrophe because so many people already do this that the world will pretty much just keep moving the way it is right now. But if you really think about your sleep schedule, are you actually that happy with it? I know personally, every Monday and Wednesday, I wake up exhausted to come to an 8 a.m. comms class. And if 8 a.m. comms doesn't fire you up to wake up in the morning, I don't know what will. So, and then those mornings, I'm running out of bed, and I'm just saying, you know what, tonight I'm going to go to bed earlier. Tonight I'm really going to get good sleep. And that never happens. Not ever. And I'm sure many of you have this same cycle that keeps repeating. I talked to my friend Jamie, and I asked him if he was happy with his sleep schedule, and I got an answer that was very, very similar to mine. On the other hand, if we actually start going to sleep without using our phones, we'll all feel much more rested and we'll be much more productive with our days. This will lead us to have more free time where we can go to the beach or go to the movies or experience all the fun things that slow has to offer. And then finally, the last argument I'm sure you've all heard, according to McGill University, there is a strong correlation between getting more sleep and getting better grades. So if you get a little more sleep, your grades will probably improve. So the final thing I want to stress to you all is this isn't a problem that your friends need to help you solve or we all need to band together. It's just a small tweak that each of us can make. And no one's forcing you to do it, but if you yourself want to improve your life a little bit, just put down that phone before you go to sleep. Thank you.